Hello, hello, welcome to Blah Blah Black Sheep, a weekly podcast where I try my very best to answer your yarning questions. I am Sarah Korth of Etsy K Handmade, and I am so glad that you are here. Thank you for being here. Hey, we're going to start with announcements because we have a fun one. Whip wrap up, you guys, it's back. Um, if you've been with me since January, which I guess I wasn't doing this podcast in January. I started in March. So, uh, but if you've been following me in other places since January, you know that uh, Whip Wrap Up is a free, super casual event where we just gather as a community of crafters and gather up all of our works in progress and try to power through and get done some of those things that we've been putting off. And we just encourage each other. It's a great community a building event that I like to brag on my community. Uh, they're the best. They really just are. And so you want to be a part of it <laughs> for them, if not for me. So um, highly recommend. Uh, I'll put... I, ha I did a whole live video yesterday <clears throat> about what it is and the, the rules, there really aren't any, and, and all of that stuff. So, and the prizes. Um, so I will uh, link to that in the description, in the show notes below. I will also link to my Facebook group that you can join if you want to be a part of uh, whip wrap up and a link to my Instagram where you can send me a message and I'll add you to the private chat group on Instagram if that's that's your preferred method of um, hanging out. So yay, whip wrap up is here. We're doing it twice this year and from henceforth into the future. I don't know if that's, <laughs> I don't know if that's how you say that, but you know what I mean. My plan is to keep it going. Keep it going. <laughs> All right, what am I wearing? I am wearing my um, modified Lavana shawl. You guys, I'm in a tank top because it's stinking hot outside. We went from like, uh, I shouldn't have said it. It's like saying, oh, the baby's finally asleep. Yet last weekend, it was gorgeousness, which I'm so glad it was gorgeous for the long weekend. But I said um, to Brian, I said, oh, we have had such a nice stretch of being able to just have the windows open. Like it's that perfect temperature where it's not too hot, not too cold. You have the house open. You listen to the birds singing. The dog is always going crazy. <laughs> but I love that time of year. And I was like, we just had such a nice stretch. And then I spoke. We've been like 85. Which I know, for those of you who live in like real hot climates, you're like, that's nothing. But I, I live in the north for a reason. And it's because I don't do well in the heat and I don't want it. So very hot. Um, so I, I have my tank top on, but inside, I'm actually debating. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> inside, I need a little cover, but not a lot of cover. So I'm just wearing uh, my... It's almost like my shawl is my little, like, short sleeve top to stay comfortable when I'm here. So this is my modified Lavana shawl. I'll put a link to the original Lavana shawl and my, uh, how I modified it. The original's made in sport weight yarn. I made it in fingering weight just for funsies. And so you can see in my project all the modifications I made, which were very minimal. So... Um, you can check that out. Oh, and then I got new earrings. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm obsessed with these earrings. These earrings are, uh, <laughs> typo. It says fiddle and grade. No, it's fiddle and grace. I don't know. Can you see them? They're like, um, see-through. And it's like etched in the acrylic, those flowers. And so when you wear them, they just like kind of glow and they catch the colors of whatever is like, well, for me, cause I don't have hair, I have hair, but not long hair, you know, like they catch the colors of whatever's behind me, which I think is so fun. So love those. We'll link those below as well. And, um, that's what I'm wearing. What is bringing me joy? 
Um, I wanted to start this by saying that I try, to, I'm generally a very positive person and I try to be two things. I try to be joyful. I, I love making people laugh. I love laughing myself. Um, I love, I really, I had an incident when I was teaching that I had a really hard time and I found a lot of solace in gratitude. Um, and so I, it's just part of my life and who I am, but I also value so much, um, honesty. If you want to know the story about what happened that made me really focus on gratitude, if you want to know the crazy lengths we've gone to about honesty being a value in our family, you can ask. You can ask, but I'm not going to go into the stories in depth right now because we're trying not to have this be <laughs> too long. Um, but honesty is really important to me. And so um, it never fails whenever I'm honest about these things. Somebody says, you should just, just be more positive, Sarah. You should just be more happy. And actually, one time a, a, a follower said, you should really just try to be more positive, just like... Uh, Sally designer and then it turned out that like a year later Sally designer had a complete uh, mental breakdown not and I'm not like in a facetious way I mean honestly seriously a complete breakdown and I think that's what happens when we pretend like everything is peachy and fine so I'm not gonna pretend <laughs> I guess is the long and short of this I'm having a hard time uh, we are in a big time of transition. Kids finished up school. That's, it's a, any transition is hard, especially for me and my oldest. Uh, we are not very flexible people. And so, but I find all kids, I think, and really all people have a hard time with transition. There, there are some people, I shouldn't say all people, there are some people out there who love, love new and different and really embrace that. And honestly, I wish I was more of a person like that, but I'm not. And uh, again, the stuffing and pretending that I am <laughs> does not help the situation. So we're in a time of transition. The kids have just finished school. My husband is transitioning between jobs. And I am currently feeling incredibly anxious and incredibly overwhelmed. Um, so I just want to be honest about that because I don't want you to look at me and say like, oh, Sarah, she's got it all together. She's always so happy. I'm not. I'm not always so happy. And I'm really honestly struggling right now. So yeah, I just want to be honest about that. Um, but in this time of anxiety and overwhelm and struggle, one of the things I have really been enjoying is, is my plants. Um, we moved into a house that is older than I am, significantly older than I am. <laughs> uh, like 20 years older than I am. And, um, so it's been lived in by lots of people, but the, the landscaping, someone who lived in this house at some point, I swear they said they went to a garden center and they were like, what does this one do? And the garden center people were like, it spreads all over the place. And they said, give me two of them. And then they just took home a whole bunch of plants that would spread all over the place. And now I am battling them literally spreading all over the place. Um, I have ferns that are trying to grow up in the middle of my yard. <sighs> so uh, the overwhelm of that has been left in previous years because I was just so overwhelmed. The first year we moved in here, I homeschooled the kids. Like, that, <laughs> that was enough. Um, so I'm slowly chipping away at a few projects. It's like the only outside time I get because it's been so hot. I can't just like enjoy being outside. So I've been uh, working outside uh, with my plants and in my gardens for just a little bit every day. And it's been lovely. I planted things in my, um, I have two planters right out 
the front of my house, they left these big concrete planters. And the first year we were here, I spray painted them cobalt blue because why not? And so I plant pretty flowers in there. I think, I think, knock on wood, I found something that the deer won't eat. <laughs> Because that was the issue last year. I planted something very tasty for the deers. And so it would grow. And then they'd come and eat them. And then it would grow. And then they'd eat. Anyways, it's fine. But I planted some, um, some food, which is fun. Um, peas, green beans, some lettuces, and um, spinach. So some greens that I can, I can actually eat. Um... And it's been fun watching those grow. But right now, the thing that is bringing me the most joy in my garden is, is, no, are the peonies. Um, we had a lot, I don't know how my mom feels about peonies. Um, cause I feel like those were the things that when she moved into the house, they were already there and she maybe didn't love them. But I remember in my backyard, my childhood backyard, lots of peony bushes, peony, peony bushes. <laughs> what I mean. And so it has been a good year for peonies. And uh, on one side of the house that I'm pointing at, that is no reference for you because you've never been here. Uh, there's this garden, like little flower bed. And I'm not kidding you. The peony bush is enormous, which probably means I need to like divide it. But for now, I'm just enjoying because last year it had like some blooms, but this year it's going to have I, I, it feels a little extreme to say hundreds, but I really think hundreds. It's gorgeousness and it's, I'm loving it. It's bringing me so much joy. So there you go. Finding the joy, even in challenging times. So small businesses that I am loving. I have again, my earth love by Danny mug with my bees. Oh my gosh. Brian was mowing the yard last weekend and he, I think he just stunned the biggest stinking bumblebee. I'm not even kidding you. It was like that big. It was enormous. And since it was stunned, he kind of like had it on his foot and was like moving it away from where he was mowing. That thing was gorgeous and enormous. And it made me so happy to see it. <laughs> So I love my mug with my bees. I love bees. I love taking care of the bees. I love providing flowers and things in the spring for them to feed on before most flowers bloom. Earth Love by Danny Mug. Link. Uh, Danny makes all of their mugs like mostly singularly. So like that exact mug probably isn't there, but I think they have other similar. So I'll link to the shop so that you can, um, shop the yarn. Okay. The other thing is, uh, knitted wit yarn. So I decided I've been toying with the idea for years. Yeah, probably years that it would be really fun to design an advent, um, a, a shawl, that would use an advent kit um, worth of yarn. So I start, I've been percolating it in my brain and I started looking through my stash to see, I did an advent kit last year, um, but it was mostly not yarn. I think there was one full skein and maybe seven half mini skeins. So they were 10 grams instead of 20 grams. So, um, so I started going through my stash and I found, look at all that, look at all that gorgeousness. I already had 11 skeins, mini skeins that I had purchased from the Knitted Wit, um, a while back, just because, just because I was like, they're really pretty and I want them. And so I got them not knowing what I was going to do. And now they've become the perfect thing. So I had 11 full-sized mini skeins, if that's not an oxymoron. Um, and then I had the seven, I think seven, 
don't quote me on it, seven uh, half mini skeins that I was like, that could work. Um, and then I went to my local yarn shop and she had a few more uh, mini skeins, which was interesting because they were in colorways that I normally wouldn't pick. So I was like, this is good. Get me out of my box a little bit. But I have this gorgeous miss of mini skeins and then I was thinking gray for the full skein and as always the wise Sarah of casting on said what about this really deep burgundy and I was like what I already own that <laughs> it's coming up a little more red it's definitely deeper oh, oh. it's it's definitely a deeper uh, burgundy-ish, gorgeous color. Um, and so, so I'm going to use that. And so this is by The Knitted Wit. Um, I love everything she dyes. It's all gorgeous. Um, and I'll link below. So that's uh, a yarn dyer small business uh, for you to um, patronize. Patronize? Pa Go shop there. <laughs> patronize is not the right word. That's like <laughs> talking down to them to to be a patron of <laughs> so there you go all right let's answer some questions all right um I think I'm going to answer these backwards I had these in an order and I'm gonna flip-flop them so Question number one, that was question number two. <laughs> All right. It says, I am so excited to join in with wrap up. I've gathered up my whips and they are more out of control than I first thought. Eek. <laughs> Do you have any tips for organizing your current whips and how, how can I keep them from getting out of control? In the future. Thanks so much for your help. All right. Um, one of the things I love about whip wrap up, and one of the things that, um, one of the reasons that we're doing it twice a year is one because people ask for it, but two, I am an accumulator of whips. I do not keep one whip at a time. I have been working on one whip for probably three weeks now exclusively because it's a contracted project that's enormous and it has to get done. And people are like, oh, are you loving it? And I'm like, no, I hate it. <laughs> and so in her wisdom, Sarah at the yarn shop said, of course, do, are you not liking it because you don't like it? Or are you not liking it because you, uh, like you have to work on it and there's a deadline? and you have to work on it exclusively. And I was like, that, that is why I'm not liking it. It's gorgeous, it's turning out beautifully. If I was able to like, if I had the time to mix it up, I am always working on more than one whip. And so the fact that I've had to stay solely for focused has been hard on my brain. It's been a test of endurance, um, but I'm getting there, I'm getting there, I think I have 16 more rows, but of like 360 stitches on like the short row, <laughs> like the fewest uh, stitch rows. So it's a little intense. Um, so I, one of the great ways to keep your whips under control is by participating in whip wrap up. Every six months, you take a month to just whittle down your whip pile. Um, but let's talk about um, organizing what you currently have. First, I, the first thing I always encourage people to do is gather up all your whips. So I don't know about you, but I often hide them. This this uh, is actually a bin that I took um, the perfect size cutting board for, and it's just the cutting boards on top. So I made it into a little table, but hiding underneath are whips. <laughs> um, I, at one point I had some on my shelves. I had some in my closet. I had some in my drawers of my dresser over there. So I think the first thing you need to do is gather it up. I know people keep things in their car. They keep things next to the couch. They may keep things in their bedroom. So like 
gather it all up. We can't assess until we see what's really there. So gather everything up. And then I think what you need to do is you got to assess what you have. Once you see everything together, I think it's a real good uh, eye opener to how much is there. And then um, it really helps you decide. Like when you're looking at things one at a time, it's real easy to say, I love it all and I want it all. Um, but when you see them all together, it's a lot easier to say, I love these the most. And if I'm being real honest, I'm never going to work on these again. So you gather up all your stuff and then make two piles or maybe three. If you have a hard time committing to things, maybe make three piles. The pile that you're like, absolutely got to finish it. Still very excited about this. Put a pile there. A pile that you're like, nope definitely never going to finish pile. And then maybe there's a middle like, well, I might finish it. I'm feeling kind of lukewarm about it. Pile. The one pile is where you're going to, the pile of the things you are still enthused about. That's where you're going to start whittling down your wits. The pile on the very other end where you're like, meh, <clears throat> frog it, frog it, frog it unravel it. If you still love the yarn, um, put it back in your stash. If you don't still love the yarn, donate it to some place. If it's mohair, burn it. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> but you, you may, you may struggle a bit more to unravel that mohair. Um, so you may want to think about if that's worth doing or not. Then I want you to make a list. And on the top of the list, I want you to put the things that you're enthused about. These do not, like just a list, no numbers. I'm gonna be real specific here. Write down a list, this sweater, this shawl, this cardigan, this basket, this pillow, I don't know. Um, start the top of the list with the things you're still enthused. Underneath them, write the things you're less enthused about and maybe put a line in between them so you remember in your brain. Then you're going to make a plan. Okay. You're going to say, this is the thing I want to finish first. This thing has a deadline of this time. This is the thing I'm going to finish third. And once you have all your things you're enthused about organized, get to it. Okay. Start checking those things off the list. If you are a meticulous person, I don't know any of those people. Just kidding. I am one of them. You might even want to list after them, like what needs to be done. Uh, sleeves, uh, weaving in ends, blocking, all of it. <laughs> Just so you can like get some perspective without take, taking it all back out of the bag. Like, um, what, what needs to be done? Cause if it's ends weaving in, you may be able to, you know, take that along some place where you don't have a lot of focus, but you can weave in ends without like, you're not counting stitches. You're not going to mess stuff up. So that's, you know, that then you'll know, Oh, I'm going, I don't know, to a barbecue at my neighbor's house. And so, uh, they don't mind if I, I sit and chat and weave in ends. So I'm going to take that. Um, you may decide like the, the sweater sleeves, I'm going to sit on my couch. That's going to be my thing. I work on every night sort of thing. So it may be helpful to know what needs to be done. And then once you've got your plan, get to your plan. Also, um, I like to have a container for all of my projects, each, each project, I like to have a container for it, and I have two kinds of containers. I have project bags in multiple sizes. If it's something I'm going to be taking on the go, it goes in a project bag. There are other things. Okay, I'm going to grab real quick. Other things that, um, that, I don't know. I just don't think I'm going to take on the go necessarily, or they're maybe in such an early stage that they can't go on the go. So this is a project that I have uh, that I'm going to work on. 
real soon, hopefully, because I'm excited for it. I just have these bins that I bought at Target. And so they're just a nice basket. They all stack inside each other. So like this one was underneath another basket. And I just have those, uh, if I'm being real honest, a lot of times they sit right on this chair when I'm not recording things for the podcast. Um, or sitting here crocheting. So give each project its own space whether it's a basket or a bucket or even a grocery bag so that you can kind of see what you have. And you're not going to be uh, saying, oh, I'm ready for my shawl. And now I'm like, oh, shoot, I only have three of my five skeins of yarn. What do I do with that other one? You don't, you don't want to take the time for that. So just have it all together. And then you're ready to get up, be off and running. Uh, as far as keeping things uh, organized in the future or keeping like your whips under control in the future, I'm probably not a great person to ask. But when we did whip wrap up in January, I said to myself, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hang some shelves in the, I had a, a very naked wall in the corner of my office. I'll have to take a picture. I'll take a picture and I'll put it here. Um, I had this naked wall and I said, what I'm going to do, I asked, I called my dad and I said, Hey dad, I have this crazy idea and I don't know if things work this way. <laughs> I said, I found these really cute drawer poles like that you would put on a dresser, but I want to use them for hooks on my wall. If I put a wall anchor in the wall, can I screw the drawer pull into the anchor. It, does that work like that? And he was like, I probably. And so I did it and it worked. Actually, I should say Brian did it and it worked. <laughs> and I, I put, I put three of them up there and I said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have those three and I'm going to hang my project bags on them and I'm only going to have three projects one for each hook and that's going to help me limit. Um, I have at least two bags hanging from each hook right now <laughs> and then other things still laying around. So I have not been great about that, but my recommendations are if you'd like to be better than me, um, have all your whips in one place. It's easy to feel like they haven't gotten out of control or to let them just like slip out of your mind if they're hidden in a bunch of different places. But when you keep all of your whips in one place, it helps you realize like, oh, you know what? I already have seven things going. I'm not going to start a new blanket until I finish two of these or whatever. So it gives you better perspective on what you are working on. And then the other thing is set a limit. Um, say I am going to be a five whip person. And then when you pull, you know, start that fifth whip, then you say, I can't start anything until I finish something else. Um, so those are my suggestions for keeping it under control. Um, yeah. So I hope that helps. I hope you'll join us for Whip Wrap Up. Um, I mean, obviously the question asker was, but you all, I hope you'll join us. It's a lot of fun and it's a great way to uh, narrow down your pile and then feel real good about casting on or starting something new because look at all you've accomplished. <laughs> all right, question number, question number two, because that was really question number one. Uh, they say, I love your new podcast, cute name. Thank you. I'm a little obsessed with the name. Uh, do you have any other podcast recommendations, yarny or not? Okay. I have gone down a giant rabbit hole of, um, YouTube podcasts. So like video podcasts, um, and I've, I've wanted to answer this question since the second it got asked, but I was like, I gotta, I gotta like do some research and all the things. And I've been doing that for 
several months now and I was like you know what I'm just gonna break this into two categories because one category I have way under control and the other category I do not so I'm gonna continue to research uh, YouTube podcasts and specifically yarn YouTube podcasts so if you have something that you think I should uh, watch I'd love to know I've become obsessed with a couple but I'm finding that there are not a lot of crochet podcasts. Lots of knitters, some people who knit and crochet. Um, I've, I'm going down a rabbit hole spinning, you know, so there's that whole thing. Um, but I would love some more exclusively crochet podcasts. I mean, not that we're completely exclusive here either, but you know what I mean maybe ones that lean more heavily. Uh, several of them that I have found that I've been like, oh, that's so much fun. I've realized, oh, that episode was four years ago and that's their newest episode. So I also don't want to take you to one. I don't really want to send you to one that there's going to be like seven or eight episodes and then they're not publishing anymore because that's not a long-term plan. So what I'm going to share with you today are some audio podcasts that I love. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to let you know, there are some that are more family friendly than others. There are some that aren't really kid friendly, but there's usually not cussing. So it's easier to like listen while the kids are around, but not really listening with you. Uh, cause I don't know about your kids, but my kids hear a cuss word and they're like, huh? <laughs> it's like their little whoop, ears pop up. So, okay. The first, these are in no particular order. I highly recommend all of them and listen to them on a regular basis. But this one was first because I was listening to it this morning. Okay. It is called Ologies and the host is Allie Ward. She is hilarious and delightful. Um, <laughs> and and it, it's uh, funny and educational. They have uh, some of their episodes they've made into what they call Smologies, which I love the name of. And those have been uh, cleaned up and shortened because some of the, some of the ologies, I'm, I'm listening to one right now. I think each, there are two, it's a two-parter and each episode is over an hour. So, you know, like my kids wouldn't listen all the way through that. So they're shorter and um, they don't have any, um, dirty words or inappropriate discussions. Uh, so that I highly recommend. She just um, interviews different people from different ologies, different studies. And I have not listened to one yet that I've been like, man, I didn't need to listen to that. It's always like, oh, it's so fascinating. And I laugh, which I love. Okay. There is cussing in the long ones though, like quite a bit of cussing and a lot of talk of like, maybe some slightly more inappropriate topics. Not, I mean, not unrelated to the ology, but like, you know, when they talk about animals, there's some talk about um, reproduction, make, ba making baby animals. So in a way that's not meant for children <laughs> to listen to. So. Beware, put your headphones in for that one. The next one, definitely put your headphones in for this one too. Just the gist, um, Jacob and Rosie are the hosts. It's an Australian podcast. They are hilarious. I cackle when I listen to this podcast and I, they are also inappropriate in many ways. So I'm always listening with headphones in and I will be cackling and Brian will be like, are you listening to just the gist? And I'm like, yes, yes I am. <laughs> it is so funny. So they, they currently go bi-weekly and so they have one episode that's um, breaking news, which is just whatever Rosie thinks is important. Um, and so it's usually just silly, ridiculous stories. There's some news, newsy kind of things, but most of it's just kind of silly stuff. Um, so it's fun to listen to lots of laughing there. And then their main episode, how they started was they take a big, like unbelievable story. Some of them very prominent, historically prominent. Some of them you've never heard of 
and they tell you the story in like a condensed term. The idea is that they're going to give you just the gist so that you can go to a dinner party and tell the story and really like impress people with how smart you are. They are smart and funny and uh, yeah, you're going to love it. Also lots of inappropriateness and cussing. So headphones. <laughs> um, the next one I'm going to recommend is Everything Happens with Kate Bowler. Um, I think I got introduced to Kate Bowler through Glennon Doyle, maybe. And she is just the most lovely. Um, and she is a religious professor. Um, but her perspective, she comes she comes at it from a really unique perspective of someone who um, beat what was a term, what they thought would be a terminal illness. And she just has such amazing perspective on faith and life and trauma and the way we deal with and treat people who are um, kind of on the dark side of life. She talks to some really fascinating people. Um, it's just wonderful. It's so wonderful. So highly recommend that. Uh, is there some inappropriateness? I think they cuss sometimes, sometimes in that one. So you might want to be careful. Um, okay. Another podcast, I just have two more, and I could have listed forever, so maybe we'll come back and do another one. Um, first Person uh, with Lulu Garcia Navarro, um, My Friends. This is like a human interest um, podcast. Her whole goal is to interview people and get their perspective on life. It has been one of the most fascinating and intellectually challenging um, podcasts I have listened to in a very, very long time. Um, she interviews people from all, all sorts of walks of life, a different political backgrounds from me, different experiential backgrounds, people who have different beliefs. And it's all in a very, like, civil, non-combative way. And it it's presented in such a way that it's given me a lot of interesting perspective on people who feel differently about things. And I, I got to say, one of the things I love about it is I feel like, I'm just going to climb up on my soapbox here, one of the reasons we are so divided right now in society is because we silo ourselves off with people who believe what we believe and um, reinforce what we are saying and we don't calmly and respectfully look at other people's perspective. And this does a great job of calmly and respectfully looking at other people's perspective. So even though, you know, they had... Uh, I don't remember specifically, but they, uh, when, uh, Roe v. Wade got overturned, they talked to someone who was, um, pro-choice. They talked to someone who was, um, anti-abortion. And while my views were not changed, it was really fascinating to hear someone's full perspective on, on their, their work with anti-abortion stuff. It was, it was thought provoking. It was really well done. I, I could go on for a while. And I think it's important to be challenged like that, to listen to other people's perspectives and to think about your own. It reinforce, it can reinforce your beliefs. It can challenge you, but if nothing else, Knowing people, knowing, I mean, because I don't know, didn't know this person, but kind of being introduced to people who believe and feel differently than you and have different experiences is, um, 
It expands me and makes me a better person. So I've really enjoyed that podcast. It's been challenging. Um, so uh, on to end on a more lighthearted note, um, the Lazy Genius podcast. Um, oh my gosh. With Kendra Adachi. I'm like, I'm blanking on her name. I know what it is. The Lazy Genius podcast with Kendra Adachi. She has a whole oh, a life organizing uh, system that blows my mind every time. She is funny and relatable and uh, ev ev there's value in every podcast she does. So also recommend that one. Okay. I have rambled on. I always say I'm going to keep this short and then I never do. So um, I apologize for lying to you every time. <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. I hope you like, subscribe, share it with a friend. Thank you for joining me. Drop comments below. Let me know what podcast you're listening to. Um, and, and we'll see you here next week. The the, the kiddos are, are, are afoot. Foot? That's not right. They're about now because it's summer. So... They may be making appearances, not just, not just the fluffy one, but all, all of them. <laughs> so <laughs> have a lovely week. Take some time to take care of yourself and happy crafting.